Psalms, Psalm 139. O Lord, you have served me and known me. Shakespeare that had, who had one of his characters say this, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. That's us. Imagine we are living our lives for real, but like actors on stage. Few weeks I've been thinking about how does that help us to see who we are. In this story, the writer is writing. Um, we're not merely players. The writer has given us wonderful parts to perform. You get to play the part of, of you, and that's good. We started with this a couple weeks ago. The playwright makes us who we are. We are flesh and blood. We are physical, biological creatures. We're not the playwright, yet we are designed to reflect something of the playwright from within the play. The playwright sets us on a stage where we live out our lives, and the playwright places us among swarms of other creatures. And the playwright has placed us within a plot, a story. 
is unfolding. And the playwright has given us freedom. Freedom to improvise together. To develop our roles in the story, our, our characters, our lines, to make decisions. And the playwright delights in this. It's all very good. You are written wonderfully by the playwright. But, but then we start to think, okay, we're doing this, how are we doing at it? How are you doing at being you? What about me and my performance of being me? We heard Shakespeare, there's also Oscar Wilde. The world's a stage, he wrote, but the play is badly cast. We are wonderfully written, we are free to improvise, but do we have a way of stumbling over the script, of scribbling all over it, of spilling the pages all over, getting them out of order, crumpling it, tearing it, tossing it? And we have ways of messing with each other's parts, too, in this story. Often we don't mean to. Sometimes we're mean enough to. So we are all wonderfully written, but isn't there also a good reason to think we've lost the plot? Somewhere between the writer's pen and our performances, we mess up. We are messed up. And stuff happens. Terrible stuff. Stuff that's hard to see how it could fit into any good story. So I wondered, has this become a tragedy? This play we're part of. And then I realized, well, not really, because a, a tragedy is written to go wrong on purpose. Shakespeare started off knowing that Romeo and Juliet would end finished off. I, I saw Hamlet a few years ago. Someone asked, how was it? He said it was wonderful. By the end, pretty well everyone was dead. But in a most satisfying way. Tragedy, tragedy finishes wrong, but in a way that kind of feels right. It, it does something good with us. That's why we shout out big money to see these things. But this story we're part of, that we're part of making, it's not this way on purpose. It's not done by the writer's design. It's wonderfully written. And though tattered and torn, it's still wonderfully written. We can see the writer's hands all over it. Was Oscar Wilde right? Is it the cast? You, me, everyone. We make it. Not a tragedy, but a catastrophe. And then we might wonder, how long until the writer shuts us down, this run we're on? Where do actors go when their show is canceled? Shame. You might have noticed the word when we were reading the song together. Laurel and had it to say, it's shame. It's a word about death. Now the Bible's picture of 
where people go and what happens to people when they die. It evolves through its pages. This psalm is from a time when people realized that when someone dies, something of them goes to some sort of other reality. They called it Sheol. In Sheol, they imagine the dead have an existence, but it's not much of one. Sheol has no presence of God, no hope of getting out, just silence and darkness. Well, don't confuse Sheol with hell, but it certainly was not heavenly. And they thought, get this, that everyone goes there. The picture on the screen is Abraham grieving his wife Sarah. One of the saints of God's people. Bound for Sheol. Everyone, whether you're good or bad or indifferent, Sheol, they thought, was everyone's destiny. Now, it doesn't end there, but from Jesus in the New Testament, we get much more developed pictures of, 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 of paradise and resurrection for the righteous and, and of hell and damnation for the wicked. Uh, much better than Sheol or, or, or worse. But even then, the Bible says very little about this. It's kind of surprising. But back to the psalm. The psalm assumes all actors end up in Sheol when their run is finished. That's a photo of a set on an opera. Time house. Never heard of it. But I thought the picture looked very shamelish. Kind of, everything's a mess and dark. All actors go to Sheol, but then the psalm gives us this. To God it says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. You are there. Sheol. Sheol, the most bleakest, hopeless, tangled, and messed up reality imaginable. Even in Sheol, God is. Sheol, by definition, where God is not, God is. Sheol, where all storylines just stop unresolved. It's like when you get into a, a TV series, and the season ends with a cliffhanger, and then two weeks later they announce that it was cancelled. Sheol is where all plots just break off like the back pages were ripped out and lost. It's Sheol where the actors are crumpled and washed out, wandering around, waiting for nothing to happen. Except in Sheol, even in Sheol, the writer is at work, still writing. And more. I make my bed in Sheol, you're there. It, it's, it's the most astonishing plot twist imaginable. Uh, maybe the second most. Wait for the first. The writer comes onto the stage in person. As one of the characters. Yes, the writer, nothing like us, chose to become 
flesh and blood as us. Chose to be knit together in a mother's womb as we are. For love of us became wrapped in skin like us to rescue our story by walking among us. You know who I'm talking about. Jesus. Uh, but, but don't feel bad if you didn't catch that, because a lot of people missed him. He was mostly unnoticed. He is the star of the show, yet he was content to play in the background. To all appearances, he was a, a minor part of the supporting cast, way down the credits, far from the red carpet. Why? Somehow, this way seemed to be necessary for him to show us how to live the plot we lost. He shows us how to do improv well. He shows us how to act. How to live with other actors and the writer. How to love. And he calls us out when we've gone wrong. He calls us to follow him back to the good story. The writer's story. Always with love. And the spotlight is, of course, shining elsewhere. It's how the world works. But do you know who did see him? Who, who is drawn to him? It's the other no names. The other extras. The others otherwise forgotten. Seems to be how the writer works in the background, in the wings, backstage. God the writer has written this character, Jesus, who is God the writer, into the play. Apparently, the writer sees great value in directing and correcting and getting us right from within the story. Not yellow from Ostage. Just sort of snuck in. And then, no one saw it coming. The writer killed off his own character. Yeah, actually, it was other actors who did it. That how twisted the plots become and us within it, we executed the writer. But the writer knew it would happen. Knew it had to happen. Let us do it. The only one who was getting it right and could get us right, we booed and hissed off the stage to help. Precisely where the writer needed to go. So that this disaster of an actor that I am, when I fly away and flee from God, when I make my bed in the place of the dead, when I'm stoking the fires of my own destruction, when I'm in my own personal Sheol in this life or the next, when I get there, God is there, already. Jesus is there. And where God is, it can be Sheol no more. This is the heart of the good news of Jesus, and I'm 
I'm desperate for it. When it comes to acting my life, I am good at messing it up, and acting lessons will not fix me. Oh, well, we do need Jesus to show us how to live, uh, how to live as God is wondrously writing us to live. But no matter how much we know, we still can't pull it off because the problem is deeper than knowledge. It's the depth of our souls that are our mess that need to be broken. We're fragile. The problem with being broken is that's the end of us. And the writer comes to us as a character in the story of Jesus and lets us break him. He became broken for us all the way to Sheol. And he went, so we won't. He broke, so we can be fixed. The star of the show snuck in and was booed off stage so that we can Finally, act. Oscar Wilde was making a good point, but he was wrong. You are perfectly cast. You can perform the life God is wonderfully writing for you now and forever of the writer who became the character.